Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we have a quick and easy tutorial for GarageBand covering some of the main audio settings you'll want to use to make your voice recording sound more professional. So whether you want to record a podcast or an audiobook, maybe a YouTube video, GarageBand is a great way to do that quickly and easily. And these settings will actually make it sound good. So let's jump right into it. All right, so we're gonna start with a new track just from scratch so I can show you how I kind of create these different settings from the basic audio track type. So we'll go ahead and create a basic audio track. From there, before you do anything else, you wanna make sure that your input device is correct. For me, that's my Rode Podcaster V2 mic. This is one of my favorite mics to use for audio recordings. Hopefully you have something that you can use as well. I definitely recommend not using the built-in Mac speaker but some type of external microphone that you're plugging in. It's gonna have the best sound quality. I'll have some examples in the description if you wanna check those out, but make sure that's good to go before you start. Over in the toolbar, I always disable the count in and the uh, metronome, just because that's a little bit annoying when you start a recording. And then we'll go ahead and head over to the voice library and check out some of these different options. Now I have tested all of them thoroughly um, some of them are pretty niche. You wouldn't really use them for a nice like audio recording. The best one by far from my testing is actually this one right here called narration vocal. This just seems to have the best combination of, you know, EQ and compression and other things where it gives us a really good starting point. And then we can just kind of tweak, make very small changes, you know, based on what type of microphone you have. So I definitely recommend you choose that as your basic setting. Uh, from there, you want to check out the record level. Okay, and I would recommend you just speak into your microphone a few times. Make sure that it's not peaking. Make sure you don't see any yellow or red like we see here. If you do, then just lower down that record level a little bit until it's just, you know, green and maybe a tiny bit of yellow occasionally, uh, but mostly green is what you want. Now, another great option here is called noise gate. This is very important for cutting out little sounds in the environment. So if you are at home and you have like a door closing or cabinets closing in the kitchen, even the sound of your own breathing, like when you breathe in, when you suck in air between phrases, that can be really annoying. So the noise gate will actually cut that out, most of it anyways, depending on the uh, decibels that you pick here. I like 38, negative 38 seems to work really well for me. Again, you can play around with this and see what works best for you, but make sure you turn that on. Next, let's talk about plugins. Like I said, these preset vocal tracks usually come with lots of plugins already enabled, so you don't have to do much here. But I did want to show you how you can add other plugins, including customized plugins. And a really good one you can add uh, from this preset list is down a ways at the bottom under the specialized tab, and it's called the Exciter. And what the Exciter does so basically boosts different frequencies and harmonics to make your voice track a little bit more exciting. It has a little bit more sizzle to it. Uh, in fact, there's an option called sizzle, um, and that is one of the, the ones that I like. I like the vocal edge, and I like sizzle. You can play around with those, see which of those adds the sound that you want, and then make sure that's turned on with the power button right there. The blue power button means that plugin is active for your recording. Now, I don't typically mess with the EQ here on this page that's already preset from the track settings, but I do like to add just a tiny bit of reverb, tiny bit of ambience, just to bring up the presence uh, of my voice as, as if I was speaking in a bigger room. Again, some of this is going to depend on your microphone and your setup, so you will want to adjust that. Don't put too much ambience, um, otherwise you'll get like, you know, echoing, which I don't think sounds good on a straight vocal recording, but some is good. And then finally, we can talk about our different EQ bands. Again, this is going to depend a little bit on your type of voice and your microphone, but I do like boosting a few of these, particularly the low end, like the 200 hertz area, putting just a little bit extra, maybe going plus one on that. And then in about the thousand range, another plus one there can sound good as well. Uh, again, depending on your voice quality and the microphone that you're using. So those are basically the main areas that I hit. It only takes a couple minutes to set this up right. Go ahead and test those out with your own recording setup. You can save these, which I definitely recommend you do once you decide on the presets that work best for you. You can go ahead and save this. This is gonna be my voiceover one patch. I'm gonna hit save there. Then you can see over here on the left, 
above the voice tracks that were already preset with GarageBand, I now have my custom user patches. So I can go back to this voiceover setup anytime that I want. I don't have to redo it you know, every time I close and reopen GarageBand. So that's really nice too. There you go. Those are my basic settings for voiceovers in GarageBand. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. So YouTube knows to share this out with more viewers. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this. And thanks again for watching.